studies Lahore College for Women University and uh, Farman Christian College University are pleased to announce the first international virtual conference on uh, gender and social sciences, diversity, challenges, and opportunities from 15th to 17th March, uh, 2022. Under the U.S.-Pakistan University Partnership Grant Program, UPGP, funded by U.S. Mission of Pakistan and administered by United States Educational Foundation for Pakistan, uh, I welcome you all and the participants uh, and the audience uh, in, the, in this uh, session, uh, which is uh, uh, about the male dominance. Um, the title of the se session is Male Perspective on construction of uh, masculinity, issues and challenges in contemporary Pakistani society. Um, I am Samina Riaz, lecturer uh, uh, in Gender and Development Studies Department of Lahore College. Uh, moderator of this session is Rabia Tahir. And now I want to introduce uh, chair of uh, this session, Dr. Farha Jamil. She is assistant professor at uh, BNU. Uh, she has done her um, PhD mm -hmm in Applied Psychology from PU. Uh, she is a very uh, cooperative and supportive person for us, uh, and uh, I'm sure for her students as well. She's an eminent researcher, and her uh, main contributions are in scale construction. And uh, she is also an Indigenous scholarship holder from ATC. Um, uh, I welcome you, ma'am, to this session. Uh, now, I would like to... Uh, invite my uh, participant, Ms. Mahnoor Ali. Uh, she will present her uh, presentation and her topic of presentation is Attitudes on Religious Commitment and Patriarchal Beliefs in Young Muslim Adults. Ms. Mahnoor. Um, uh, I think it's Samina, it's uh, Mariam ka hai topic. Yes. Hai. <clears throat> I'm the first author. Okay, okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, the, sorry, Ms. Manur, uh, her topic is the dark triad psychological maladjustment and prevailing crime rate in men. Okay, so, so uh, Mrs. presenter Mariam, you can Mariam has a class. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. Or if all the question with the Najari, Samina, I am associate professor. Okay, okay, sorry, ma'am. So, please correct it. Jim, I uh, so uh, I'm uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, I wasn't updated about right. right. <laughs> right. huh. Sorry, uh, ma'am. Uh, but Farhat is working as an uh, associate professor at uh, BNU. She is Mariam Behram. She has to go for her class, so uh, we are asking her to present her presentation. And she is presenting along with uh, Dr. Farha Jameel. Uh, and her topic is Attitude Towards Honor, Killing Religious Commitment and Patriarchal Beliefs in Young Muslim Adults. Ms. Mariam, uh, you are going to present, uh, uh, share your own screen. You can, you have, uh, yes. okay, please go ahead. Thank you, Ms. Mina. Please, uh, this, um, okay. <clears throat> okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Mariam Behram, and I will be presenting the findings of the research Attitude Towards Honor Killing Religious Commitment and Patriarchal Beliefs in Young Muslim Adults. Uh, before I begin, I would like to thank the organizers and the sponsors of the conference for giving me this opportunity to present my work. Um, so um, let's begin. So um, honor killing, what are honor killing? So um, honor killing is a crime that is most often committed towards a female family member, where she is killed by a member of her family, usually a male, due to the perpetrator's belief that the victim somehow brought dishonor and shame upon the family by violating religious or social norms. So uh, these uh, the type of violations can include alleged marital infidelity, even getting raped, dressing in a way that is considered um, inappropriate, refusing to marry, husband to be chosen by her family, refusing to abide by her faith, or engaging in homos homosexual relations. 
so you see um, honor killing is a practice that is deeply rooted in early patriarchal and fundamentalist practices and it is different from other types of murders such as domestic violence such as serial murders revenge killings crime crimes of passion because of its distinct motivation that is based on the norms of morality and behavior characteristics that are associated with various cultures usually underpinned by uh, religious fundamentalism so the deviation from uh, these norms is basically perceived as loss of family honor and uh, uh, the death of the victim you know who allegedly violated violated the social norms of morality is regarded as a way to uh, reinstate the family's honor okay so um honor killing um is the occurrence of honor killing is um uh, the honor killing is the occur worldwide and according to united nation it is estimated that 5000 honor killings um occur globally each year out of which 1000 honor killings occur in pakistan alone and the countries that have reported honor killings include pakistan india afghanistan egypt um united states united kingdom bangladesh um and italy and most of these countries are most uh, muslim countries and um the cases that are you know reported in your Euro european countries and the western world they have also been among the muslims or migrant muslim communities so um according to a research um a survey um 40% of the pakistanis they said that honor killings were often justified if a woman engaged in premarital um, you know sexual relations or adultery so you know 40% of the uh, pakistani agreed that honor killings were somehow justified so you see we cannot ignore this fact that honor killings are occurring in a uh, predominantly muslim cultures so what is the relationship between islam and honor killing so you see many muslim uh, commentators and or organization they condemn the practice of honor killing and they say that the practice of honor killing is an un-islamic cultural practice and uh, there is no mention of honor killing in either quran and this practice actually violates islamic law so the custom of honor killing dates back to pre-islamic tribal traditions and it's not the part of sharia law but uh, of course we cannot ignore that most of the honor killings are occurring in predominantly muslim and patriarchal regions so the objective of this research was to basically investigate the re relationship between one's religious commitment and their attitude towards you know honor killing um uh, it, it was also to analyze the relationship between patriarchal beliefs and attitude towards honor killing to explore the predictors of attitude towards honor killing to find out the gender differences in attitude towards honor killing and to study the gender differences in patriarchal beliefs as well so the following hypotheses were formulated and derived derived from the literature review number one there is a relationship between attitude towards honor killing and religious commitment number two there is a positive relationship between attitude towards honor killing and patriarchal beliefs patriarchal beliefs predict attitude towards honor killing men have more positive attitude towards honor killing than women and fifth men have more patriarchal beliefs than women so um a quantitative research design uh, was used the relationship between the variables and the extent to which they um, relate with each other was explored using a correlational research design uh, the myers the following myers were used attitude towards honor killing scale religious commitment inventory patriarchal belief scale and demographic a demographic questionnaire so um basically a sample of 200 participants equally divided for gender um you know aged between 18 to 23 years enrolled in an undergrad uh, enrolled in an undergraduate degree studying in a public university were approached via purpose of sampling 
um, a pilot study was conducted on eight individuals to assess the comprehension uh, level and understanding of the items and evaluate the average time taken uh, to complete the questionnaire. The uh, participants were approached after seeking permission from the authorities. They were approached in a group settings, setting where they were given the questionnaire. And they were explained instructions and ensured about confidentiality of the research. An assessment measures were scored and compiled for further statistical analysis using IBM SPSS version 21. Um, so um, um, after the correlation analysis, um, we found that there was a significant negative relationship between religious commitment and attitude towards honor killings. And we also found a significant positive relationship between inherent inferiority of women, which is a subscale of uh, uh, patriarchal beliefs and attitude towards honor killing. Um, moreover, men were more likely to endorse patriarchal beliefs and they held a positive attitude towards honor killing as compared to women. And we uh, didn't observe any gender differences for religious commitment. So, uh, we also found that um, okay so inherent inferiority of women uh, which is a subscale of uh, patriarchal belief predicted positive attitude towards honor killing so these are some the summary of the findings. We found that there was a significant negative correlation between attitude towards honor killing and religious commitment. There was a positive correlation between attitude towards honor killing and patriarchal beliefs. Inherent, inherent inferiority of women, which is a factor of patriarchal beliefs, significantly predicted positive attitude towards honor killing. Uh, there were no gender differences observed in regards to attitude towards honor killing. Men were more likely to endorse patriarchal beliefs and its subscales. Uh, score more on its subscale, especially inherent inferiority of women and institutional power of men as compared to women. Uh, no gender differences were observed on gender domestic roles and educational mother also had a negative correlation with inherent inferiority of women. So more the mother was educated, um, less likely the participant was to, you know, um, hold the belief, uh, hold patriarchal beliefs. So these are some of the some of the implications of the studies are as follows. Um, firstly, the study debunks the belief that honor killing is a religious practice. In fact, it establishes that honor killing emanates from cultural rather than religious roots. Um, uh, second, it is that um, education is really important if we we need to end this practice, and it would be useful if you know cultural programs are designed to educate both males and females of the family. Furthermore, uh, uh, the results reveal that attitudes in support of honor killing are deeply rooted in patriarchal beliefs rather than uh, you know, religious beliefs, which is a broader system of beliefs about male domination, which we need uh, in order to reduce positive or attitude towards honor killing. Um, uh, we need to educate individuals about, uh, pet, uh, about patriarchal beliefs. And mayas at different levels can be taken, uh, including strict action taken by a uh, justice system against honor killings and any forms of gender-based violence. The result also showed that men are more likely to hold patriarchal beliefs as compared to women. So we know that you know, seminars should be held in light of current research by specifically targeting men that need more awareness. Uh, the result also showed that mother's education was negatively associated with inherent inferiority of women. The government should increase funding for women's education and design programs to encourage as well as give financial incentives to motivate people, especially in, in rural areas, to send their female children to school. The future directions for research. Uh, so uh, future studies can further um, they can include more sample size to increase generalizability of the results. Uh, they can include sample with low educational background. Uh, the study, since the study explored attitude towards honor killing, uh, further studies can study the actual behavior in, and include a, include a sample of perpetrators. And a qualitative, qualitative study should be conducted to explore the reasons behind a positive attitude towards honor killing of general public and the perpetrators. Thank you.
Thank you, Ms. Maryam. Uh, question answer session will be at the end of the presentation. Uh, now I would like to invite Ms. Mahnoor Ali and uh, she is going to present uh, her uh, presentation on the topic, the dark triad, psychological maladjustment and prevailing crime rate in men. And um, uh, she is uh, going to present this um, uh, presentation uh, along with um, Sapa Pat. She is Malu. Anyone? Manu, are you going to uh, share your own screen or uh, should I do it for you? This screen share going to get this out. Manu, can you see my screen? Assalamualaikum, everyone. Ms. Samina Riaz, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm actually having some issues with the audio. I think I'm audible to everyone now. So my topic yes, is on the dark triad, psychological maladjustment and prevailing crime rate in men. I'm from University of Central Punjab and I'm presenting this research work in affiliation with Government College University Lahore Department of Psychology under the supervision of Dr. Muhammad Musaffa Bhatt. I would like to share my own screen here so that I can control my slides. Okay, so that's my topic and uh, I'm gonna start now. Let's start with the introduction. Uh, as we know that uh, prevalence of crime rate is higher in men and it has been reported frequently throughout the literature. We have the size that this might be due to the personality dispositions. Uh, men may have different personality dispositions as compared to women and the literature also suggests that the same uh, findings. Uh, according to literature, uh, men are usually higher in dark personality traits like uh, there's narcissism, there's aggression, there's callousness. Men are usually high in those personality traits. And we can possibly study all dark personality traits in one study. So we narrowed it down to the dark triad model. The dark triad model uh, consists of three major personality domains that is narcissism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism. The narcissism is characterized by grandi grandiosity. Psychopathy is characterized by callousness and Mach uh, Machiavellianism is characterized by manipulation. So uh, we also observed that families and parenting has also significant effect on the personality dispositions of an individual and on deviant behavior as well. So we also included those variables, specifically parental acceptance rejection in our study in our model. Our hypothesis were these, uh, we have decided that men have significantly higher dark prior traits as compared to women. Men and women significantly differ from each other in levels of psychological adjustment and memories of parental acceptance rejection. Memories of parental rejection are significant predictors of the dark traits and psychological maladjustment. And significant path level differences will be observed between both genders in this regard. Our sample consists of 696 Pakistani young adults, 333 men with mean age 21.67, and 363 women with mean age of 21.59 through uh, 18 to uh, 25 years of age. We tried to control our uh, sample on all demographic variables, of course, uh, except gender. The data was collected from different cities of Pakistan, uh, which are uh, mentioned here, Lahore, Karachi, Dijihan, Islamabad, Sheikhupura, et cetera. The minimum sample size required for the study was estimated using G-Power software. Uh, 
corresponding to a simple power of 0.95 and the minimum size that G power suggested us was 107 participants. So uh, this is more than the minimum prescribed power of 0 0.80 and our participants are also 696 way over this limit. So the sample uh, size was appropriate in this regard. We used these measures for collecting our data. Uh, this, uh, if you can see here, uh, parental acceptance and rejection questionnaire and personality assessment questionnaire, these both are based on IPAR theory posed by Professor Ronald Rohner, and these are very well-known questionnaires. Uh, they also have been, uh, their validity and reliability has been established pan-culturally, and our, in our study, their reliability was also excellent. As we can see here, for father version, park had 0.89, and mother version, park had 0.88 alpha reliability. And similarly, personality assessment question has also good reliability in our study. It is around 0.87. Uh, we also use short dark pride scale developed by Paulus and William. Uh, it is also a very well-known scale uh, used to study uh, neuroticism, psychopathy, and Machiavellianism uh, subsequently. In analysis, uh, to analyze that data, we uh, first ran the independent sample t-test to check if uh, men and women were different on our study variables. And uh, we realized that, as you can see the p-values here, men and women had significant differences on all study variables. If we see the means here and uh, on uh, parental acceptance rejection questionnaire, higher mean scores usually indicate higher parental rejection, not acceptance. So if we uh, observe the mean scores here, we can see that men had higher mean scores on paternal rejection, the rejection they experienced from their father's side, while women had higher scores on maternal rejection. Similarly, women had higher scores on psychological maladjustment as compared to men. Now, if we see, if we look at the dark triad model, we can observe that men have significantly higher scores on all three dark traits as compared to the women. And we were uh, hypothesizing that this would happen, this exact thing would be observed in our data. Uh, so, which would, uh, from which we can infer that the crime rate in men is higher because of the personality dispositions. Now, uh, just on the basis of this test, we cannot, of course, make this inference. So we uh, developed a structural model and ran path analysis on it. Uh, you can see the model here. These are the empirical results for the good fitting model, representing the standardized regression coefficients for significant paths only. The non-significant paths were deleted from this model so that the model fit would get better and we will get uh, exact results, exact findings that we were uh, interested in. Now, if I show you this same diagram in uh, a mathematical form, so you can see that here in the table. Okay, so multi-group analysis was also ran as we were uh, interested in group differences majorly. Here you can see that we have two groups, men and women, and there uh, the variables have been mentioned under this heading, the paths. Paternal rejection and uh, narcissism, psychopathy, psychological maladjustment mentioned under it uh, actually describes that how paternal rejection affects narcissism, psychopathy, and psychological maladjustment in men and in women. And the chi-square values here can uh, tell us, can indicate us that whether these two groups are different on path levels. Unconstrained model was ran according to the guidelines of James Gaskin and David Klein. Uh, the unconstrained model showed that the, both the groups were significantly different at model level. For further analysis, for further exploration of the differences between men and women on different paths, we uh, again ran the path analysis and we observed that only uh, men and women were different on only the path from paternal rejection to psychopathy and psychological maladjustment as indicated by the chi-square. And similarly, men and women were different on one more path that is from maternal rejection to psycholo psychological maladjustment. Now what this actually means in our simple terms, it indicates that paternal rejection would have more effect on psychopathy and psychological maladjustment levels of men as compared to the women. As you can also see, uh, the values of standardized regression rate that uh, if one standard deviation increase in psychological maladjustment occurs, it means that 
0.163 standard deviation increase units increase in uh, sorry i uh, i accidentally uh, mentioned the dependent variable earlier i'm sorry i would like to repeat this line if one standard deviation units increase in paternal rejection occurs it would affect men uh, on 0.163 standard deviation units on the levels of psychological maladjustment and similarly if maternal rejection uh, is changing the psychological maladjustment of, of women would change more as compared to men so these were the results of our study and they simply indicate that men uh, are different from women in their psychological uh, or personality dispositions specifically on levels of psychopathy and psychological maladjustment and uh, the effect of father's parenting style or the effect of father's rejection is more severe usually for men as compared to women while the effect of maternal rejection is more severe for women as compared to the men so that's the conclusion of our study the findings of this study paved the way for further studies on the topic and converging generalizable empirical evidence can be effectively translated into indigenous model for prevention of crime in the society and for of course rehabilitation or treatment in the correctional settings the limitations and future recommendations involve that uh, firstly the transgender wasn't included in this study and uh, of course that sample is hard to get but it would I, i'm sure it would definitely provide us more insightful results also uh, some more uh, limitations nay technicalities that the study involves are uh, related to the research constructs which are purely symbolic because uh, the parental acceptance rejection questionnaire actually tests the memories of parental rejection in the individuals it doesn't uh, uh, ask you about your current state or current perception of uh, how you shared relationship with your parents in fact it uh, it checks the memories what memories you have what kind of relationship you shared with your parents in your childhood so that's the technicality of the construct and that's the technicality of the research eventually also even the short versions of scales were utilized the questionnaire was considerably long and might be exhaustive for some participants and comparative studies exploring the dark tendencies in adolescent limited and life course persistent offenders are also recommended for future research in this regard that's it for my presentation uh, if anyone would like to ask a question you are all uh, most welcome Thank you, Manur. Uh, now we have uh, uh, Dr. Subha Malik, uh, who is the uh, lead of this uh, uh, this project, and she's also with us. Um, now I would ask. Uh, uh, I would... I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. Uh, if you're asking a question, can can you type it instead? I'm so sorry. Manur, still no one is asking. I'm going to ask the audience to ask question if they have or any comment. Uh, please uh dr fark can you hear me yes yes i can hear you okay i think we will ask question towards the end of the session ma'am uh, we have only these uh, two participants uh, third one was dr iram she is not coming uh, she has uh, some emergency at home so she is not able to make it uh, so we have only two participants for this session present at the moment Uh, okay. So that's why I'm asking. Uh, uh, okay. okay. So we are done with the presentation. Yes. Almost. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, should I conclude the session then? Uh, first of all, uh, Dr. Farah, thank you very much for uh, pairing this session. It was a very important session um, from our side, and we were really looking forward to having you on board as chair. Thank you for that. And uh, um, uh, first of all, I would yes. Before concluding, I can. Um, I was thinking maybe we can ask the participants if anybody has a question uh, for uh, attendees. We want to ask the attendees if anybody has any questions for uh, both the participants who presented. Manur, can you hear us now? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. So, who is the other um, uh, presenter? Uh, other presenter was my student Maryam Behram, and she is off to take her class, and uh, I'll represent her. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so, um, 
anyway so uh, let's ask the other attendees if anybody wants to ask any question so anyway in the meantime i want to ask mahnoor that uh, first of all i want to ask you that uh, when you began the uh, presentation you i think that you were presuming that men have this uh, you know the triad of personality that you uh, uh, sort of focused on um, i just have felt that you were not really supporting it with any research that men would have these characteristics more than women uh, did you uh, explore the literature for that manu yes ma'am we explored the literature and uh, we have many references for that like thompson and thompson uh, from 2019 he also suggested that men would have higher dark traits and higher crime rates as compared to women specifically in patriarchal societies like pakistan and there are many other references for that like uh, there is moffat study uh, conducted in 2018 and fellinder study in 2000 and 3 and there are many other references i actually didn't know okay. those here so that oh, okay okay so that is good and otherwise manu can you just throw a little light on the statistical analysis that you carried out it was about multiple group comparison yes ma'am hmm uh yes ma'am uh we carried out multiple group comparisons using amos uh following the guidelines of james kaskin and david klein uh, if you want me to present the results again i can may i present the slide again ma'am okay okay Here are my results. Um, so uh, that was our model. We analyzed it using a model. Uh, we did, of course, part analysis under the uh, guidelines of Klein, David Klein, and we are, were also following some certain rules and regulations prescribed by Barbara. Okay, uh, these were the results of my multiple uh, multi-group comparison. You can see here. the uh, we first ran the unconstrained model on a mode and it gave us the chi square uh, value which indicates that the both the groups were significantly different from each other on model level uh, like on the whole model as a whole model they were both the both groups were different from each other then for further exploring how these parts that you can see in this diagram how they differed across both groups Like if we uh, we can see here that external rejection is a significant predictor of narcissism. How does this specific part differ in both groups? How is it different in men as compared to women? So uh, when we ran the analysis, a chi-square threshold was given that uh, the statistical analysis gave us was fifteen point five nine. If the chi-square value of our part is greater than fifteen point five nine, that it means that both the groups will be different. On part level, then as you can see here, it's all the analysis. There are three variables, or there are three parts from which this threshold has been crossed, and they are indicated here in blue. So the results show us that the parts from the terminal rejection is okay. So okay, thank you, Manu. Yes, <laughs> I followed from there onwards. So thank you very much. Okay, Dr. Farah, I would like you uh, to say your comment. Okay, first of all, I would like to <clears throat> congratulate um, organizers of this conference, uh, LCWU and faculty from FCU, especially Dr. Subha Malik, Dr. Sara Shahid, uh, for arranging this academic venture and for inviting me over to chair this session. Um, also, I would like to congratulate the participants who presented their work. Uh, first of all i have a question uh, from you mahnoor your topic is really mm. interesting and as we know that that uh, as the topic is interesting so it raises questions in our mind so uh, there are a lot of questions but i'll stick to a few one um the topic was uh, limited to the crime rate in men but when we uh, looked at your presentation uh, it involved men and women and then it it was based on a gender based comparison 
so uh, uh, what what inspired you to uh, uh, tag this topic especially with men so what is the reasoning for that manu your your your, uh, your voice is not clear the voice is not clear it's uh, quite uh, distorted no it's not clear it's not it's not clear yet you may okay. mute and unmute again perhaps it will help you okay ma'am am i clear now ji ji okay uh, i was telling you that uh, i uh, i was studying this topic few uh, months back i was exploring the crime rate patterns across mm-hmm. both genders and i realized that the gender gap has been decreasing over the years mm-hmm. uh, yes in previous decades the uh, men used to have higher crime rate in uh, different countries and now we observe that women are also getting more involved into the crime world uh, specifically uh, men are higher in serious crimes serious kind of crimes mm-hmm. while women uh, they commit more like property crimes and their crime uh, their offenses also go unreported so that was something interesting for me that uh, whether these this gender gap is decreasing in pakistan as well so that's why i conducted this study and uh, if you uh, see the title it was prevailing crime rate in men so that's why we are conducting the uh, group differences to see if the crime rate is prevailing in men as compared to women okay 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 so yes. so that point was valid then as dr supha pointed out that there must be some research evidence in the beginning to establish the argument yes ma'am uh, hmm. Uh, so there uh, there is another uh, comment that uh, i also um, conducted a research i think two or three years back on incarcerated women in pakistan so we took data from punjab and we also observed that most of the women uh, who were in prisons uh, they were there um, for the murder of their husband so i am talking about incarcerated women so uh, it it also shed light on the fact that you pointed out that now women are uh, also engaging in crimes and this is how uh, our uh, cultural practices and patriarchal system and oppress- oppression that pushes them uh, and the circumstances that push them towards these crimes obviously there are certain dispositions uh, they when they combine uh, into some sort of behavior of these uh, heinous crimes at times uh so uh, it was a good presentation and i wish you all the best and i would also like to comment on my uh, work because that work is so close to my heart and it stemmed out of my interest in the term honor killing which is assigned to that uh heinous crime uh first of all i think that this nomenclature need to be revised which i believe that there is no honor in killing so um, as a researcher as an educationist we should think over it that what kind of nomenclature should be given to this phenomena which is sadly called honor killing world over um it's a bitter fact that uh, women are conceptualized as an object contingent to the honor of men so who placed honor in women's Uh, uh, uh women being women who who place that honor in that so whenever um i see i see uh, quranic verses i see hadith there is no such evidence there is no such evidence to kill the woman by a brother or a father or a husband on the basis of such an for example suspicion or out of their paranoia or out of any cultural practice so it's a it's it's a bitter reality that uh, how uh, sometimes uh, religion is also used as a tool and uh, women are women are the victim of the kind of uh, aggression of men and um, 
Instead, our religion has given the role of protector and guardian to the males. And how it goes, it totally goes against the teachings of our religion as well. So traditional patriarchal mindset has always used oppression as a tool to halt the woman's empowerment. So now the time is to think over it. And especially when we looked at the findings of the first paper and the second paper, there was one common thing. For the first paper, there, there was an implication that role of female in educating male is important. That how educated women, they perceived uh, that uh, a negative attitude toward uh, honor killings and they perceived that uh, they held a negative attitude toward patriarchal mindset, which was a strong predictor of positive attitude toward honor killing. And similarly, I think Mahmoud also found out something like that um, uh, regarding that how uh, uh, women, uh, uh, you see that nourish or, or promote this sort of behavior in men. So uh, role of women is really important. We should, focus, we should focus on educating and empowering our women because at the end of the day, the male who is the perpetrator is also in the hands of a mother, of a woman. So perhaps exactly. we should start mm -hmm. from there. So uh, we should Exactly. Start. I was also thinking the same, Dr. Farad, that the way uh, boys are nurtured, the way they are yeah. brought up, is also both the studies are actually throwing light on that as well. That uh, the way boys are brought up, that uh, uh, you know, that is also something very important. The and raising, another, of uh, yeah, and, and another, another important thing is role of father. Uh, so uh, Mahmoud mentioned in her paper that uh, father's behavior was important. The father's rejection and perceived father rejection played a significant role in uh, in um, predicting the. Um, dark tried uh, and especially psychopathy and i can remember a research conducted by my colleague in her doctoral work she worked on conduct problems of ch in children even in school children because we are talking about remember parental rejection of adults what do they perceive in retro how they used to perceive their parents when they were uh, young uh, so my colleague worked on school children and she worked on the conduct problem and she found out that uh, father's education and father, father's involvement, it was significantly related to the conduct problems in uh, children. So in our society, when we, where we uh, sort of obviously uh, magnify role of women, similarly, there is a, a very uh, important and silent role of father as well. So uh, it goes both ways. Parenting does a lot to the to a child's personality, but obviously the weightage and the, the kind of impact which comes from the mother is um, is uh, you can say undeniable. So um, it should be looked into. So thank you, Dr. Subha. Thank you, Savina, for having me over. I thoroughly enjoyed the paper, and I wish you all the best for your conference. And I wish all the best for uh, to the participants who came forward and presented their work. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Fahar, uh, for providing us uh, this very comprehensive conclusion about uh, uh, that's the way why patriarchy uh, develops in the cultures, uh, why gender and as the gender is also embedded in our culture. So, by educating women. Uh, we can change, we can make uh, substantial changes in our culture and uh, these changes will uh, not only uh, bring gender equality, uh, um, but also um, uh, provide, will provide more opportunities uh, for women to flourish uh, and excel in their fields. Uh, so thank you so much, uh, Dr. Farhat and the participants uh, and the audience for uh, um, uh, attending this session and providing uh, us very uh, knowledgeable uh, information. And uh, we are uh, uh, really thankful from uh, LCW and uh, from FT College and uh, uh, from all, all the organizers of uh, this uh, conference. So this is all from this session. Um, thank you. Oh, thank you, Farhat. Okay, thank you. I love this. I love this.